Now, let me come back over here and I'm going to click the edit script. And let's just take a look at what's automatically generated. I'm going to assume a little bit of knowledge here. I am not here to teach you .NET. I'm not going to even try. If you want to learn .NET, that's kind of on your own. Uh, generally speaking, uh, a lot of .NET developers do SSIS. Um, so it's a good skill to have for certain. Um, let's see couple of things let's just walk down here the script main part okay. so the script main we're gonna see down here in the bottom that is the entry point class of this script now what that means is that when the script task executes this is the class that gets loaded okay. and you can see up here in the top we are in the script sorry I thought I had my we are in the script main class Okay, so you can see it being defined down here as well. Public partial class script main. Okay. We have some attributes that this is script main, the version. There's really no description for it. This is automatically generated. It has taken the GUI ID of the project and put it in here and made a CS proj here. Okay. There's a little bit of generated code. You notice that we are defining what success is. So we're saying that the DTS exec result success property is equal to success and then failure. Okay. Just going to be for later use here. Uh, down here we can come down and read some nice little comments. It tells us, and this is great stuff, we haven't really covered it. Here it's like a step-by-step -step, uh, instructions here. So it's like, hey, one. If you want to reference a variable, do it like this. If you want to write to the log, do this. If you want to fire an event, do this. If you want to work with connection managers, do these things. Okay. So really, really helpful. Again, Chapter 7, we're going to go through this. We'll go through uh, this in Chapter 5, how to reference variables. So we'll talk about how to do that. Okay. Same thing. and I. We'll do the same for VB here in just a little bit. Uh, but I can minimize all of this right there and get down to, I love it, to do. Add your code here. Okay, sweet. Notice that the script results.success, when we look at the Visual Basic or VSTA generated code, we have defined an enumerator that script results.success is equal to this. Well, you know, you could just say, I want this. Here, I want to make that right there. I probably shouldn't be telling you that. That's a little above where we want to go right here. Just keep it as the logical. Uh, you don't have to know that right there. Anyway, you want to add your code right here. And at the outset of Chapter 4, we talked about how to do a message box. So we did the message box class. We used the show method. And we then popped up a message box that said, hey, now. Terminate it with a semicolon, really some simple stuff. Uh, I say OK. And if I run it, it just pops up a little message box. So what we want to do, though, is I want to show you how to send email using .NET. Now, I'll do the C-sharp code first, Visual Basic next. It's actually not that difficult. Let me load up my script editor. Two things that this code will depend on is you bringing in a reference to the .NET namespace and bringing in a reference to the .NET mail namespace. Okay. So, oops, well, you could see it right there. So we have to using those, which imports, which is the actual keyword in VB, imports those namespaces because we're going to want to send email. So here's what we are going to do. I have a Hotmail account right here. Uh, you can see it's learn it first at live.com. And I don't check this email. It's just a junk email uh, that I have it. Uh, I just really registered it, uh, I think, in the SSIS 2005 to be able to send email through. That's really the only purpose of it, uh, to do demos right here. So what I'm going to do is show you in this video how to link up to a live address. Now, in other videos, when we get to Chapter 7, we're going to talk about Google uh, using Gmail, using Yahoo, uh, other things. I'm just going to use this particular one. Coming back over here. 
Here's my script task. So let's take this junk out here. And I'm going to have to import the mail message. So I would say mail message. Okay, so here is my mail message class. And I'll just give it an object name of message here. And it's a new mail message. And you can see the IntelliSense of the VSTA kicking in. And so there are four overrides to this. And I'm going to take advantage of this one. I'm sorry. To where I pass in the from, pass in who it goes to. These are email addresses, what the subject and what the body of the email is. Now I'm going to keep this very simple and I'm just going to send it to the same address. I'm not even going to make a variable for this, which is what you'd really do. And the subject is hey from C sharp and the body is woohoo. Not a whole lot to that, right? Now, those of you that understand C Sharp 3.0 recognize that I could have used an implicitly typed object name, but I'm just going to use mail message right here just for to make sure everybody can understand what that actually is. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the next thing, and that was an optional step, really, that one line of code, because I could have done it a little bit later. So the next one I'm going to use is an ST, SMTP client. And so we'll just call it client and same sort of logic. It's a new SMTP client. And our override is I'm going to go ahead and pass in the host and the port. So you see the host and port. So the host for live is smtp.live.com. And it uses port 25. Now I could just say client.send and I can pass in the message. Okay. However, that would fail because live requires an SSL connection, a secure sockets layer. And this is not SSL by default. So I have to actually back up a little bit and I have to say client.enable SSL equals true. So I do want to actually use that. I also have to tell it a couple of other things. I have to tell it that this delivery method is of a type network. So we're sending this across the network here. and where did I put my password in? Does live allow me to send anonymous emails? No. So I have to actually specify that my credentials are a new network credential. And this is why we had to have the system.net namespace. And the network credential is my email address and then my password here. And I've set it up. So you can take a look. I am, again, saving this so that you can look at this when you download this file. So let's just go now run this. I did not put any error trapping in here. In the real world, I would use a try-catch block. We see green. It was successful. If it is unable to reach the uh, SMTP or it gets a timeout or an authentication error, it will actually cause a failure of the task. So we click, and there we go. We were able to send it. Now notice this is a text-based email. Chapter 7, I'm going to show you how to do the HTML-based emails.